Hey, what is up? Welcome to this episode of the Wantrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Lofermento. And also, as always, I am so excited for today's guest. I'll be transparent with you all. We were geeking out about business and deals and the way that you are, can structure business inside of any industry in any realm. We were talking about sports, but today's guest loves business and loves all of this stuff. Let me tell you about her. Her name is Callie Carbo. She's a brand and digital marketing strategist who believes that brands should be as strategic as they are beautiful. Callie is the founder and CEO of Honeycomb. She believes that every business not only deserves top-notch branding, but a creative partner to walk alongside them. With nearly a decade of experience in marketing, Callie combines field-tested strategies with innovative approaches to create timeless brands who break through the noise. And I'll tell you what, she does all of this in some truly innovative ways that I've not seen any other branding agency recognize. Replicating. She has such an interesting way of building brands, of executing brands, of bringing brands to life. I'm so excited, so I'm not going to say anything else. Let's dive straight into my interview with Callie Kerbo. All right, Callie, you and I already got each other excited with our business talk before we hit record, but now that we're on the air, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here today. Heck yeah. I feel like your bio only gave a small snippet of all the things you're good at and all the things that you do. So take listeners beyond the bio. Who the heck is Callie? How did you get here? Yeah. So I grew up in Middle Tennessee, small town kind of upbringing and I ended up landing in Texas for college, which really was one of those kind of life moments where everything changed. I learned a lot while I was in Texas, but I actually got a job there at a floor studio. And that was really where the entrepreneurship kind of kicked in. I was their only employee. They were two sisters running the business and they kind of taught me everything that they knew. And once I graduated from college, I ended up in Austin, um, started my business there, met my now fiance. We ended up traveling for a year and a half after um, 2021. And now we have landed here in Huntsville, Alabama, where I'm still running my company. We just turned seven last week. And I'm also managing my family's farm. So I have a piece of property that dates back to 1917 that I recently took over the land management of, and we're going to be getting married there this fall. We're also rehabilitating it into a place that we would really love to share with people and create um, a really unique experience here in um, Southern Tennessee, Northern Alabama area. Yes, I love that overview. I also love seven years, Kelly. That is incredible. I'm of the firm belief, it's been a theme for our content here in 2023, is that we need to start celebrating entrepreneurial longevity so much more than we do. So huge yeah. kudos to you. And lastly, you. this podcast, we started in 2016. So same timeline as you. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's crazy how much growth and lessons and learnings come along the way that you and I, out of the gates, we didn't know so much of this stuff, for example. Oh, no. <laughs> I love how it, it it takes place even in your business. And obviously, we're going to talk about branding and on so many mm-hmm. different levels today. But I want to call it out for listeners right on your website, which is honeycombcreates.com. We'll talk about it at the end of the episode. But the only reason I bring it up so early is because it's right there in your headline. We partner with businesses to build an online presence that tells a story, that increases conversions, and deepens customer relationships. Very rarely do we see people talk about why this brand stuff is as important as it is. Mm -hmm. Callie, when we talk about a brand, it touches so many things. What is it to you? Sure. So branding, when we think about branding within Honeycomb, we think about this living ecosystem. Um, And that's often how we describe it. Your brand is an ecosystem. And just like a human who is completely unique and has unique qualities and unique um, personality traits, your brand also has unique personality and unique traits about itself. And when we think about 
what changes from a business to a brand, it has a lot to do with how thoughtful you are about infusing that personality into something. And that's really what we help clients do. We help them transform their businesses into full-fledged brands that can then become a part of something bigger. It can be a part of their customers' lives and their clients' lives um, because brands impact us. We feel connection to them even if we haven't purchased from them. And that is what branding does. It's really powerful tools that connect us to something beyond just the usability of a product or um, the efficacy of a service. Yeah, I'm so glad that you started out with that word, ecosystem, because I think that's an awesome launch pad for our conversation from here, because it's something that's really evident in your work, which I'm dying to talk about your brand in a week service and the way that you operate there. We're not quite there just yet. We'll definitely get there. But the thing that really stood out to me when I was researching what your brand in a week service looks like is that you aren't just a branding agency. You aren't just the creative or the visual components of it. You also go into websites. You also go into e-commerce and Shopify is a big platform that you work with. And when I think about that, especially wrapping it with that big word of ecosystem that you already brought up, that's something that I've always felt in so many of my businesses, having done this since I was 19, is that, you know, maybe my website's great, but then when it comes to my social media, the two are not tied together. <laughs> There's no cohesion amongst them. And that's why I love that you wrap the visuals into this strategy. Talk to us about things that you see a lot of businesses getting wrong when it comes to those inconsistencies across their different platforms, then obviously guide us to the light. What are those ways to be more strategic and intentional across our entire ecosystem? So I think the biggest thing that we see when clients come to us is they come to us either from a referral of someone just telling them that they worked with us in the past and they should come to us for branding or they just come to us because they like our design style. And they're coming to us saying like, I just need a website. I just need a brand. I need a, I need something online. Like I know I need something or I need to improve something. And what we start to do is we ask a lot of questions because what we're trying to do is get to the root of who you are. Why is it that you need to have a brand? Why is it that you need to have a website? I want to know the why behind what it is that you're doing and that deep down mission and the drive that causes you to want to get up every day and put something out into the world so that I can do my best work and so that we can bring all of those things to the surface and get your customers to understand why they should choose you over the hundreds of thousands of other choices that they have. Um, so it's not for us, it, we're not even just looking at a brand or a website or a marketing strategy. It's really looking at the underneath. What is, what is the undercurrent of this brand? What is it that you're really trying to say to the world? Um, and this comes out a lot with naming. So we've done a fair bit of naming of companies. I'm um, currently naming a company right now. It's a, a restaurant project that we're working on and we're coming up with name concepts for them. And one thing that I love is when people come to us and they want a name and I get to extend the brand even further. It's not that they've even come to me with a, a name concept and I have to build a story around it. I actually get to start from the root and tell the story from the name and everything flows out of that. And that is really the kind of work that lights me up. And it's the kind of work that is really highlighted, I think best in our brand in a week service when we are able to dig deep, ask the questions and then translate it out to the world so that when people see it, they're like, wow, that really means something. And it translates exactly how we envisioned it. Yeah, and what I hear when you talk about your thought process with regards to that is so frequently it comes out. It comes out in your work, comes out in your answers of what is it that you want to be? Who do you want to mm -hmm. be? And that's why one of the things that I saw that really stood out in your work is your brand archetypes. And I know that's something that mm -hmm. you go through with your clients. And and the thing I like about that is it's almost like if you give me starting points, then I can start imagining. I can start seeing mm -hmm. ideas. Whereas if it's a blank slate, I don't even know what I want to be. Like that is yeah. the hardest question 
question to ask. Talk to us about some of those brand archetypes. What are those patterns that you see in brands that people should really be strategic and intentional about choosing? Yeah, so the one of the very first exercises that we have everyone go through in Brand in a Week is the brand archetype. And it's where I ask you, who is your customer? And you would be so shocked at how many people have never been asked that question or have never stopped to really consider where their customer likes to eat whenever they go out or what they listen to whenever they are not wanting to listen to Spotify. Like, what are the things that your customer is doing? What do they care about? And those are the things that allow us to build a brand that's meaningful. When we get to the heart of those things, to the things that your customer really needs and not just the things that you're speculating that they need, we can develop something that is truly special. And as far as what I see across the board from like a higher level perspective, I would say a lot of times the brand archetypes are far more specific than people make them out to be. I think we often want to err on the side of caution and appeal to everyone. And this is a huge mistake that I see people make all the time is they're like, well, I appeal to everyone 18 to 65. And that's probably not true. When we're talking about a brand archetype, we're trying to find that hero customer, that customer who is going to be an evangelist for you, the person who is going to receive the most benefit from the work that you do. That's the person we want to talk to. That's the person we want to get into your brand. And that person is not 18 to 65, right? That person is a specific age. They have specific interest. They live somewhere. They have you know, a family or they don't. And when, by the time that we're done with that process, we actually give people an image. We give them specifics. We write a life story about this person so that they really can cement themselves in this idea that they are talking directly to this person. What does Julie need? What does Seth need? What, what are they looking for in your brand and how can you use that as the starting point for everything, for your content? When people get hung up on what do I do, it's often because they don't have a framework. Brand archetypes give you a framework to work off of to say, this is the person I'm talking to and what does that person want to hear from me today? You know, what can I give them that's a value to them today? And that's where we love to start. And it often blows clients' minds. Like they feel so seen after that worksheet um, because they feel like it all suddenly makes a lot more sense what they're doing. And it doesn't mean that that archetype can't change over time. It just means that we are using this as a starting point to then give you the room to allow your brand to grow. Yeah, I love that answer for so many reasons, Callie. First of which is because one of my words for this year is intention. And all of this, what you're really talking about is sitting down and you choosing your brand rather than just being a mishmash of who knows what on social media, mm -hmm. in your email marketing campaigns, on your website. It's about being intentional and applying that across the entire scope of your business. I'm super curious about this, Callie, because listeners have heard me preach about identifying your mm -hmm. ideal customer for seven years now. And I do think it's an essential part. I'm also curious from, and this is maybe a selfish question as an entrepreneur, I guess part of me is like, how much does our own personalities play into the brands that we build? I know for me, it's so important for me to feel like mm -hmm. I'm shining through in this stuff because I want to have fun with it. But in my twenties, if we had this conversation a decade ago, Callie, I would have said, oh no, I, I want to impress people. I want this corporate mm -hmm. brand. I want it to be serious. And I just realized as I matured as a person and entrepreneur that no, it needs to be somewhat aligned with my personality. How much does that mm -hmm play into it for you? Oh, a hundred percent. I went through the same thing. I felt like I needed to position myself as larger than I was whenever I first started my agency. And it turns out that people did not care that I was a one person shop at the time. They actually thought that that was better. I had a lot of people tell me, well, I got the runaround at this big agency. I didn't feel like I was seen or heard or communicated with. And because I'm just working with one person, I feel like you see and you hear me and you answer my needs and 
you're really attentive and you have a high touch and high care factor with the client work that you do. And we're still a small shop. We've got four team members um, total, including me. And I really like it that way. I also am much more chill now than I used to be. You know, my my brand personality now is really a little bit blunt sometimes, um, a little bit funny. Like if you look at our homepage, I you can see some of my personality coming through and the copy and the images. And um, that's just kind of the way I, th- I think in metaphors. And I kind of shied away from that for a long time because I thought people wouldn't take me seriously. And now I'm like, no, this is this is exactly how I would explain it to a client. So why would I try to diminish my personality to fit a a box? And I think that that's really, that is really it is a lot of people who go into business feel like they need to prove something or feel like they need to be a certain way to be an entrepreneur, that there is a formula for what makes someone successful. And ultimately what I tell everyone is that you cannot copy anyone else. No one else's formula is going to work for you. It's why these promises of like, just take this course and you're gonna become a six-figure entrepreneur are lies because at the end of the day, we all have unique styles and ways that we want to run our businesses. We all have very unique goals of what we are trying to achieve in business. And if you don't tailor it to that, you lose yourself in business. And the goal, I don't think, is to lose ourselves. And the goal is really to find ourselves, find our flow, and impact as many people as we can in our own way. And that's really the place that I've gotten to after seven years is the way that I'm running Honeycomb, I never saw anyone else do. But I went on blind faith that this is what I needed selfishly to be a whole human and to get to the type of life I wanted. And it turns out that there are a lot of clients out there just like me who are our ideal clients who also want that too. They love the way that we do things as much as I love the way that I do things. And so it's now beneficial for both parties. But the reason I even changed my business in the first place was because I didn't feel like it reflected who I was accurately. I didn't feel like my business really was a good reflection of me or who I was. And I felt like I was kind of squashing myself to fit some mysterious story that I had come up with in my head. And as soon as I started shedding those stories of what I should, could, need to be, I became a better entrepreneur and I was able to show up in a way that resonated with a lot of people and not even just with a lot of people with the right people and my ecosystem now my community now is probably stronger than it's ever been and i've also been able to attract team members to our team who honor that same type of perspective and that is also how they view the world So it's not just about finding the clients who reflect who you are. It's also about building the team who aligns with who you are and aligns with your values. And that just, it makes a world of difference. It's a game changer when you operate from that place. Yeah, listeners, I want to call it out for each and every one of you. You just heard Callie and I both confess in our own businesses, we at first thought there was something we were quote unquote supposed to be. And and Callie, I know for me in my early 20s, anytime I was creating a website, even if it was just me, is that I always thought about pronouns. I was like, I'm going to say that we do this. I'm going to make it seem like there's this whole team behind me. And I love that you're a great example of this. And you're right. It does show in your copy. I'm going to read for listeners from your website. It literally says on your website, what you'll find here isn't an agency. It's a partnership with a small but mighty team of people who deeply care about your success. It feels like people are behind these words. It feels like there are people behind these projects. So I love that insight into your own brand and your own evolution. And for you Mm -hmm. listeners, hopefully this accelerates it. Callie and I had to do this wrong for us to learn how to do it right, but you get the opportunity to learn from our mistakes and learn from our lessons. So hopefully that accelerates your success. And Callie, the next thing I, I wanted to ask you as you started talking about your team, but you kind of alluded to it, is I wanted to ask about how do you keep that brand consistency even as you grow your team, as 
you hire. It's something that I've experienced so many times in my own entrepreneurial journey is, I built this baby, I love this baby, mm-hmm. but now I'm gonna share it with somebody else. I want that consistency. And I think one thing I heard in your answer, which you already touched on is, your vibe attracts your tribe. When you start mm-hmm. showing up as you, you'll start attracting future employees, team members who are also gonna reflect what you have. Is there anything else you wanna add on the bringing teammates into it? Yeah, so this may be unique to me, and I will just preface by saying this is this style of hiring is not for everyone, but the what I have realized in my journey of working with different team members, and this is fairly new for us, I would say the last two years is when I expanded my team. So I worked five years solo and then slowly add, I, well, quickly added team members in the past two years as we scaled. Um, I like to hire someone based on their values and what they um, value in work over their skills. And I know this may be a little controversial, but I actually hired my last design assistant who um, she is still with us. She's only, she's not even been with us a full year yet. And she had never designed anything digitally. She was a painter. Um, she had some background, like she enjoyed design. She was had a good eye for design, but she had never done any of the design that I was going to be tasking her to do. And that was a, a big risk. Um, but what I like to do is teach people from scratch. I'm a self-taught designer. I teach and anyone who comes into our organization, I teach them from scratch how to work with us. And I think it gives people a lot of agency to fail and fail often and get better and hone their skills and see what works. We're really data driven. So we like to look at the data to kind of guide design decisions on like email marketing, for example. And I still do primary brand and website design, but my design assistant handles all of our retainer work. So email marketing, Pinterest, Instagram, all of that is handled under her purview. And I've been able to actually give her all of that work now. And she is excellent, um, blowing it out of the water. And she's not even been with us a year, but she learned so quickly because I gave her so much room to grow. And it's meant a lot to her because she feels really empowered to do the work. I am not a micromanager. I don't have time to be. And I think people coming into our ecosystem that we've built here at Honeycomb, it is really special. I do give people a really, um, really big runway for growth because what I want people to do is to come into Honeycomb and be able to grow their skills significantly and they can either stay with us or they can move on, but they're better off because they've been in an environment that really encouraged them rather than um so many designer jobs or so many jobs and agencies that micromanage you and teach you only how to do something a certain way um, i'm always open to new ideas i'm open to my team members knowing more than me i'm humble enough to say that they can be right over me being right sometimes you know they are advancing their skills to the point that they sometimes know about trends more than I do, because that's not the side of the business that I'm in. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with them becoming more advanced in their skills and being completely confident in where I sit within the organization um, and guiding them to that pathway, because that's only going to be better for our little corner of the world. Yeah, I think there's so many important hiring lessons in what you just revealed, Callie. And I think more often than not, when we give people, I love how you said, I give them room to grow. I think when we do that, more often than not, people will grow into it. And the other thing that I really heard in that answer is how much you're just you're just like, yeah, failure, it's gonna happen. It's an essential part. Mm-hmm. It's part of your role of onboarding. It reminds me of, I was a finance major in college and it reminds me of this old story that one of my professors told where someone got hired at this Wall Street company 
company and he made a really bad trade and lost the company $500,000. And he went to his boss and he said, are you going to fire me? And the boss said, fire you? I just invested $500,000 in your education. I'm not going to fire you now. So I love that story. And it is in, in whether it's someone that we're hiring or our own entrepreneurial journeys, as we figure it out as our first and only employee, it's something that we need to embrace as well. Kelly, I want to transition. It's the big topic. You and I have both teased about it so much. I think it's something that makes your business so unique and really made you stand out and why we reached out to you is your brand in a week service. And I'm going to preface this because I love Tim Ferriss has 15 questions to life. And one of those questions to life that I use frequently in my own business in life is he always says, if I only had two hours to work this week, what would I work on? For me, it always shapes the priorities for me. It puts into focus, here's the domino that takes care of the rest of them falling. And I think that when you have a brand in a week, hey, this is what we're doing. We're gonna focus on what works. Talk to us about, first of all, why did you even come up with that? How, like why is it brand in a week? Because every other branding agency is say, hey, we're gonna work on this over months and it's gonna take years even for you to develop it further. What's so different about this approach? Yeah. So how this even came about was 2020, obviously a very pivotal year for a lot of us. In March of 2020, when everything shut down, I had 16 clients, 16 open projects that I was working on. And I realized for the very first time that I was severely burnt out. I mean, we're talking like beyond burnout. This was like I, if I had thought about it too much, I wouldn't want to get out of bed burnout because it was just so intense. The amount of pressure that I had placed on myself was so intense. The amount of projects that I had that were open was so intense. And I gave myself a goal. I said, I'm going to close all of these down in a month. And I did. And during that month, I developed something new. And I really can't even tell you where brand in a week came from that was like the depths of my subconscious bringing something amazing to light but my boyfriend now fiance at the time we'd only known each other a couple months at this point um he was like you just have to like create the business you want like who cares about what the rules are you know you just need to create something that you want and so i started sketching out what I would want on paper. What were the issues? The client projects took too long. They were taking like eight to 12 weeks. By the time that they got to launch, it was so diluted. It wasn't even what I would consider my work anymore. And I wasn't even super proud of it. Um, The clients were not paying me on time. It was a pain to get the payment. And the amount that I was making per project, if you calculated it out, was like less than minimum wage. So I'm not even making a living wage. The projects are taking too long. It's just like, a, it's a mess. Like it's not feasible to scale that. And so I thought about it and I was like, man, I really, I like research. I like going down rabbit holes. I like being so immersed in something like a method actor that I can just like put on blinders and that's all I do. I can do this for anything. You want me to research something? If you're looking for a new water filter, I will go down the world's longest rabbit holes for you. That's just like how I'm wired. And so why am I fighting my wiring? You know, why am I fighting what I'm made to do in the way that I'm just built? And so that's where Brandon and Week came in. I can immerse myself. I call it method designing. I immerse myself in a brand. I get so knee deep in this brand to the point where I'm listening music that aligns with the brand. I actually ask clients what music their brand represents and I will listen to that music all week while I design. I just immerse myself in the ecosystem and what comes out is really just far better work than I was ever producing before. And it's not just because my skills have gotten better, it's because I created a method that really worked with the way that I worked. So brand in a week, I initially launched it. It is exactly what it sounds like. A It can be a brand and website in five days, or it can just be a website in five days, Monday through Friday. And we have never had a website not 
be completed in that time or a brand and website be completed in that time. There are rare occurrences where we get pages added on or things like that, where we extend our deadlines, but um, that's kind of an anomaly. But we've done over 20 since we launched in 2020. I only, you are my only client that week. You're the only person I'm focused on. I only take on two a month because it does take so much of my creativity and I am so deeply embedded in it that I, I think creativity is precious. And so I do not max out on those. And um, there will even be times when I will complete a brand in a week and I'll block off our calendar for a few weeks because I just need to reignite that creativity and foster it again because I do give so much of myself during those weeks um, whenever we're developing that for clients. Yeah, Callie, I would imagine on your end that that means you have to have good systems in place, not just to get the work done, because when you start talking about all the visual aspects, a freaking website live in a week, that's incredible. I personally know how much work goes into all of those things, but also what I'm fascinated by is your framework in your systems as far as getting to the answers that you need, getting the clarity, the strategy, the intention that you need. So I'm curious about, this is me being a a math geek in my background. I'm curious about the order of operations, Callie, because yeah. we're talking about building a business in a week. A lot of listeners are going to say, gosh, like it's possible to have this much of a transformation in a week. What's your order of operations? Are you first yeah. throwing copy at the board? Are you throwing visuals at the board? Walk us through all of that. Okay, Brian, this is going to blow your mind a little bit, but this is, this is my process. And I, I just know this is exactly how it works for us. So we, when we onboard a client, they will set their date. You know, we get the date locked into the calendar. We'll get them onboarded into ClickUp, which is our favorite productivity platform. I could talk on a whole podcast about how much I love ClickUp, but we get them in there. They fill out their brand worksheets. We require those to be in our hands a week before the brand in a week. Because what I do is I go ahead and start immersing myself in the branding. I read through all the brand worksheets. I start really wrapping my head around the concepts. And then... And this is just the way that we sort of work. I will create the branding. I will create the color palette and all of the visuals that go ar along with it. I'm um, usually the Friday before the brand in a week. And I work solely whenever I design in flow state. So I will block off four hours of a time block and get into flow state and crank it out. I usually, unless a client is bringing us copy, that's really rare. We usually write all the copy for all of our brand in weeks. Um, unless a client's bringing us copy, I write the copy as I design websites. So I am, and I'm designing fully as I go. So colors, fonts, copy, images, it all happens as I go. And I will usually crank out a first set of visuals on Monday, we present that to the client. They sign off on the visual direction. We create all of the other pages. We start building on Tuesday. By Wednesday, we usually have a um, live mock-up for them to walk through. By Thursday, we've done revisions. By Friday, we're doing final revisions and sign off. And one thing I wanna add here, we do websites um, and we build websites so that clients can edit them on their own. So we are only building websites in builders that we know they can then edit on their own. So not only are they getting a brand and website, they're getting something they can easily update. We provide them all of the style guides, all of the visuals that they need to translate it into their social media, usually some templates that they can go ahead and use. And we also provide a tutorials library so that they understand how to edit. So the only times they're really coming to us are for page builds. Um, I need a new page, can you build it for me? But even, even then, some clients feel empowered enough that they can just build the page on their own and use their own pages to piece sections together. So we're building in WordPress, but we're making it really a lot less complicated than traditional WordPress builds typically are, really empowering our clients. So it's not just we're standing up a brand and website in five days. We're giving you a system that will serve you for years to come. And that's something that I'm really passionate about. I don't want to just give you a bunch of visuals because you don't have the time to do it on your own. I want to give you a system that you can live with and that really serves you well so that you feel like you invested well in 
doing this for your brand. Woof, Callie, that answer alone is worth its weight in gold. I hope listeners go back and re-listen to so much about your approach when it comes to your brand in a week because you just revealed so much about what's working for you. And I want to call out a few things for listeners. The first thing I want to call out is I love how you started by saying I work in a flow state. You minimize resistance, which I'm going to ask you in a second how you get into that flow state because I'm sure listeners are going to say, I don't want resistance in my work. I feel that resistance every time I sit down. So I love that that's the first thing that I want to call out. The second thing I really want to call out is for listeners saying, well, gosh, Callie, then it must be easy for you that you could just plow through a website in your first go. Well, the thing I want to point out for listeners is this comes through reps. Callie was not like this at age 10. She probably wasn't like this at age 16. This has come through reps in life and in her career where the more she does it, the better she gets at it. Reps are, there's no other way to replace reps. And the third thing I really want to point out for listeners is, Callie, what I hear, I love that you you literally just take to the canvas and you don't look at it, measure it. You just start drawing. You start writing copy. Mm -hmm. You start putting in the visuals. And to me, what that really shows is that you have a high tolerance for the understanding of this isn't the final draft. I'm getting stuff down on paper because it's a lot easier to tweak and refine. So I love that. Talk to us about that flow state because it seems like a lot of the process is that Mm -hmm. minimal resistance for you. How do you get there? Flow state changed my life, 100%. Learning how to get into flow state completely changed the way that I work. And it took me a couple of years to really master it. And I would say now... I know all of the ingredients I need to get there. And that is about the only way I like to work now. It's so, flow state is so powerful that you really don't wanna work any other way. There are very few days that I'm like, oh, I can just like pop open my computer and do some work. I really like to have these time blocks and it's made me so much more effective in the way that I do my work. So. A lot of the things for me is setting the environment. And I hear this a lot with people. I've talked to a lot of other entrepreneurs about flow state themselves and you know how they get into it. Uh, a lot of the way that I do it is through music. So I listen, I'll just tell you all the, all the things, like exactly what I do. So I usually put on a candle or put on some incense. I'll burn that for a little while. I will put on Tony Anderson radio on Spotify. He does film scores and honestly has some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard in my life. And I will listen to that through my AirPods so that I block out other distractions. Um, And I make sure I have water on hand. I do take breaks. Like I will set timers for like three, four hours is usually when I try to get up and take a break. But setting up my environment, I've also spent a lot of time setting up my workspace in a way that I know works for me. So I have my laptop up on a stand and I have uh, my keyboard and mouse and second monitor, like all of that really helps me to create in the way that I think makes the most sense for me. I shut down my email, I shut down notifications, I put my phone in a different room, I don't take calls, I don't answer texts. I just go. And that is so liberating as a creative because I think in life, we often feel like time to ourselves can be elusive. And as creatives, time to create can feel elusive. And what I found in flow state is I can create time to just be creative and just be with myself and just create. Um, And listening to client music as well, like listening to the music that fits the vibe of their brand also helps because I'm embodying the feeling that they want to have. So if it's lo-fi music, I'm not creating this like neon colored bright site. I'm creating something that is more muted and calming and relaxing to look at. But if it's a like an event planner who has this really like edgy vibe to them and they listen to like practically EDM music. You know, I'm listening to that and it's like really hypey and helps me get into a different kind of flow state where I'm creating something that is just allows my creativity to kind of run wild because it's just breaking the mold of um, what you're trying to do. So for me, flow state looks different for different projects, but at the end of the day, 
it is one of the only ways that I can work now. Um, and I can work anywhere and get into flow state, which was the brilliance of traveling. Traveling forced me to become really acquainted with distractions and figure out how to tap into flow state without having to be in a completely silent room. Um, I'll also add that I do yoga almost every day and I am like a some semi frequent meditator. <laughs> I don't meditate as much as I should, but I do yoga every day and that's really helped um, for focus as well because I'm really honing in on, on just focusing on my body whenever I do yoga and work is the same way. I'm just focusing on the screen in front of me. Yeah, Callie, thank you so much for so transparently sharing all of those aspects to your routine that get you into flow state. And I hope it really puts into perspective for listeners who are thinking, gosh, yeah, I just, I kind of try to force it. I open my laptop and I try mm -hmm. to force it and I, I hate getting into projects and I never finish them because of this. You guys, do you see how much intentionality is behind every aspect of the way that Callie's doing her work? So I so appreciate those insights. Callie, I can honestly say huge kudos to you because I feel like all of your answers here today are incredibly insightful. I always say that success leaves clues. All listeners are gonna get a huge glimpse into why you are successful at all the things that you do and your success leaves clues and you're so generously sharing them with us here today. If any listener listens to any of these answers and takes action, intentionally implements it into their practices in life and in business, it's going to benefit them. So Callie, I've loved all of these things. I always love giving guests the hardest part of the job, which is to sum up all these different things we talked about today. Listeners are going to be feeling the heat, knowing that they need to take action in so many different ways. What's the one thing that you think people should walk away from this episode and say, you know what? This is something I can be more intentional about. I need to be more intentional about. This is something I'm going to do from here. I think the most important thing whether you are an entrepreneur or trying to grow a brand or you're on the agency side is really leaning into asking questions and digging a little bit deeper because questions led me to a lot of the places and success that I am experiencing now, questioning why I'm doing things the way that I was doing them, questioning if my habits were serving me. Um, are these different lifestyle changes serving me? Are, is this the lifestyle I even want? What is the vision for my life? Asking yourself questions is going to get you to a place where you're curious about what's possible. And when we're curious about what's possible, we often can uncover a lot of new discoveries about who we are, whether that leads you to rebranding and focusing on your brand or whether that leads you to lifestyle changes that enhance your life as an entrepreneur or whatever the case may be for you, really focus on asking the right questions of yourself and the people around you to get the things that you want. Because at the end of the day, the way that I see it is I'm not building a business to be miserable. And I preach this to our clients all the time. We're not building businesses that do not feel and breathe like you do. We're building businesses that you can continue to sustainably run now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And that's my goal. I want to be doing this for a long time. Um, I want to be impacting people for a long time, whether that's my business, the farm, through my family. Like I want to be doing this for a long time. And that starts by asking myself questions about what kind of impact and legacy I want to have on the world. Woof. I love that lasting piece of advice for every single listener. It's something that we will all benefit from. So Callie, that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. I want to open the stage to you. I know listeners are going to be chomping at the bit to see more about the way that you work. We've teased your brand in a week service, all of that stuff. So tell listeners where they should go from here to learn more about you, your work and everything you're doing at Honeycomb. Yeah, so the best place to find us is our website, honeycombcreates.com. I am on Instagram occasionally. I have pretty strict boundaries around Instagram, but I did want to mention that right now for our seventh birthday, we are running a special. I never do this, but this is something that I wanted to do in honor of this big business milestone. We are giving anyone who locks in a 2024 brand in a week 
a locked in 2023 rate. So the rate is increasing in 2024. So if you book us now, you get that rate. Plus you get two free Hive sessions, which are one hour sessions with me where you can ask me anything. You'll leave with an action plan. You'll leave with goals and things to do and software systems to check out. Um, it's just a really great time for you to connect on all of those burning business questions. So if you book a 2024 brand in week, you get the locked in rate and you get two free Hive sessions and you can learn all about Brandon Week and all the other things that we do at our website. Boom. Listeners, you know the drill. All the links that Callie just mentioned, as well as to her Instagram, are down below wherever it is that you're tuning into today's episode. Check the show notes. Her website is honeycombcreates.com. You'll find that link down below. Callie, I love that you're celebrating your seventh anniversary in such a big way and extending it to so many other entrepreneurs. So all of you listeners, I know when this episode is airing, it's in July. So you still have a while to lock in those rates ahead of 2024. So that's a huge opportunity to work directly with Callie and her small but mighty team. So I love that. Callie, thank you so much for joining us here today on the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast.